Hey guys, I want to talk about the story of Elijah and the remnant. This is a story that a lot of Christians like to bring up when we talk about how modern Christianity is not following Jesus. For example, I recently had a conversation with someone who was reading through our book, Dead Church. And what he said was, you have to be careful. You don't want to be like Elijah. Okay, Elijah thought that everybody else was apostate. Elijah thought everybody else was disobeying God, and he came to God and he complained about them, and God came to Elijah and was like, who do you think you are? I've got 7,000 other people. You're not the only one. And this person was saying, you got to be careful that you're not judging everybody else because God has other people out there. You're not the only one. Elijah thought he was the only one and God rebuked him saying, no, I have 7,000 other people who are also not worshiping Baal. And this is a response often brought by people who are part of mainstream Christianity. They look at themselves and they look at those around them and they see that these people are doing things for the Lord whether or not they're doing what the Bible actually says to do, they look at these people who are doing things for the Lord and they say, look, these people are Christians. You can't judge these people. God has a remnant. You can't just assume that these people aren't obeying God. Which, as we point out in Dead Church, both our book and our video series, they're the same thing. They're both available for free. As we point out in Dead Church, just because you're doing something for God doesn't mean you're doing what God wants you to do. The Israelites thought they were doing things for God when God called them apostate people, adulterous people, and said, you are not my people and I'm not your God. The Israelites still thought they were worshiping God. They still thought they were serving God. And so it's important for us to recognize we can't just look at people around us who are doing things for God and assume that they're doing the right thing or that they're even saved. The Bible is very clear that many people will call Jesus Lord and he will tell them, I never knew you. And we get into this in detail in Dead Church as to what does it mean to actually obey what Jesus taught? What does it mean to live the Christian life that Jesus and the apostles were actually teaching? Not just doing the religion that we have today. But what I want to talk about in this video is that when people bring this response talking about Elijah and the remnant, they're missing the whole point of that story. Not only are they missing the whole point, but they demonstrate that they're not learning from the Bible. They're learning from men. They're just regurgitating what other men have told them. Because men have taught this story for many years as Elijah thought he was the only one, but God said, no, I have a remnant. You're wrong. You're not the only one. I have 7,000 other people. That's how men teach this story. But that's not what the Bible says. And so when these people come and they, they say, you got to be careful, you don't want to be like Elijah. No, I want to be like Elijah. You don't get it. You don't know the story. You're regurgitating what men have said about the story, not what the Bible says about the story. Because God did not rebuke Elijah for saying that he was the only one, for saying that the people were apostate and rebelling against God. No, God agreed with Elijah. Not only did he agree with him, but he comforted him. And he did not comfort him by saying, don't worry, I've got 7,000 other people. That's also how Christians take this, that, that God comforted Elijah by saying, no, 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 don't worry, there are others out there, there are others out there. No, that's not how God comforted him. God comforted Elijah by saying, essentially, yes, these people are all apostate. Yes, they're all wicked, but don't worry. I'm going to kill them all. That's the story of Elijah and the remnant. Let's read it. The story is found in 1 Kings 19. Elijah comes to God and says, Lord God of heaven's armies, I have always served you as well as I could, but the people of Israel have abandoned their covenant with you, destroyed your altars, and killed your prophets with swords. I alone am left, and now they are trying to kill me too. So that was what Elijah brought to God. He said, 
These people have abandoned you. They're not following you. This was during a time where the people had stopped worshiping God and they were worshiping Baal. And Elijah was saying, these people have abandoned you. They've broken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've killed your prophets. And I'm the only one left and they're trying to kill me too. That was what Elijah was saying to God. Now, let's read what God answered and see, is God saying, A, no, Elijah, who do you think you are? You're not the only one left. Is he saying, B, don't worry, Elijah, I've got other people out there. Don't worry. It's not as bad as you think. Or is he saying, C, yeah, you're right. But don't worry. I'm going to protect you and I'm going to crush your enemies who are all trying to kill you and I'm going to kill them. All of these apostate people are about to die. Well, let's see what God says. The Lord said to him, go back on the road that leads to the wilderness around Damascus. Enter that city and anoint Hazael to make him king over Aram. Then anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, to make him king over Israel. Next, anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will kill anyone who escapes from Hazael's sword. And Elisha will kill anyone who escapes from Jehu's sword. I will spare 7,000 people in Israel who have never bowed down before Baal and whose mouths have never kissed him. So we see in the story, God is not rebuking Elijah saying, who do you think you are? You think you're the only one left? No, I've got other people out there. He's also not really saying, hey, don't worry, it's not so bad. It's not as bad as you think. I've got 7,000 people, don't worry. No, God's essentially saying, yeah, yeah, these people have broken my covenant. These people have abandoned me. They've torn down my altars. They've killed my prophets. And yes, they're trying to kill you too. God agrees with Elijah, but then he comforts him by saying, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to destroy them. They are all going to die. That's his comfort to Elijah. The fact that there are 7,000 others is not really his point of comfort. See, Christians read that and they treat it as if 7,000 was 7 million. Okay, 7,000 is a fraction, a less than 1% of the number of people who would have been in that kingdom. Elijah was saying to God, all of the people in this country have abandoned you and they want to kill me. And God was saying, yeah, less than 1% of the people are going to survive what I'm about to do. So here's the thing. When Christians look at the remnant, and yes, I believe there's a remnant out there. I've met some people who are truly obeying Jesus and changing their lives to do what he taught. They're out there, yes. But 7,000 people out of millions is basically nothing. It's totally acceptable to generalize the 99.9% .9 and say everyone has abandoned God and is killing his prophets and now they want to kill me too. That's what Elijah said and God did not tell him he was wrong. When we look at Christianity today, we need to recognize that yes, God has a remnant, but that remnant is such a small percentage it might as well be that everyone has broken God's covenant. It might as well be that Christianity as a whole is not obeying Jesus. That's why the apostles warned that the time would come when it would be terrible because the church as a whole would fall away. Obeying Jesus means doing what he actually taught, doing the things he actually said to do, not just doing anything for the Lord. And modern Christianity has broken God's covenant. People are not obeying what Jesus taught and they will call him Lord and he will say, I never knew you. We go into detail why in Dead Church. Again, the book is free on our website and the video series is the exact same thing as the book. It's on our YouTube channel. Does God have a remnant? Yes, he does. 
Does that comfort me? Yes, it does. But saying God has a remnant does not mean you're part of that remnant. It doesn't mean that people around you who think they're serving God are part of that remnant. And it's important to recognize that if it's just a remnant, it's going to be a very, very, very small number. God has always had a remnant. Noah was a remnant. The entire world died and one man and his children were saved. The Israelites in the wilderness had a remnant. 600,000 people left Egypt and two people, Joshua and Caleb, two people made it to the promised land. There was a remnant in Israel during the time of Ahab, during the time of Elijah. The kingdom at that point would have been millions of people probably. 7,000, that's it. 7,000 survived what God brought on the people who had abandoned him. It's not a story about how saying that everybody has abandoned God is wrong. It's a story about how saying everyone has abandoned God is right. That is the correct assessment. 99.9% .9 of people have abandoned God and they are not worshiping him and they are not following him. And they are all going to die. When Christians quote this story as if that 7,000 were 7 million and they treat it as if God was rebuking Elijah or anything along those lines, they're showing one thing and one thing alone. They're learning from men and not from scripture. They're regurgitating the Bible stories they were taught in Sunday school and they don't actually read it for themselves and see that their understanding of that story is completely wrong. God was reassuring Elijah, telling him, don't worry, I'm going to kill all those people. They're all going to die. That was the point. He wasn't saying, don't worry, I've got 7,000. And he wasn't saying, don't you dare think you're the only one. He was saying, don't worry, don't worry, Elijah, don't worry. I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to kill them all. Hazael's going to come. He's going to kill a bunch. The ones who survive from him, Jehu's going to kill. And the ones who survive from him, Elisha's going to kill. And only 7,000 people out of the entire nation are going to survive what I am about to do. That was God's response to Elijah's complaint. Elijah said, all these people want to kill me. And God said, don't worry, I'm going to kill them. So let's not miss the point. And let's recognize that if there's only a remnant today, that means the mainstream Christianity, 99.9% .9 of Christians out there will think they're worshiping God when they're not, and they are about to die. So what do you have to do to make sure you're not one of them? Because everyone will think that they're part of the remnant. Everyone will. Everyone always has. That's the story of the Bible. The Israelites always thought they were still on God's side. The Pharisees thought they were on God's side. The people who have abandoned God always think they're doing what God wants. And then they die. So what do you have to do to make sure that you're not part of that majority? The apostles warned us that the time would come when the church as a whole would fall away. That means that 99.9% .9 of the people will be in that category of people that God said they're all going to die. What do you have to do to make sure you're not one of them? And if you're surrounded by people who you think are Christians and they look exactly like 99.9% .9 of Christians, then why do you think they're part of the remnant? The remnant is not the majority. The remnant is less than a fraction of a percentage. And everyone else will die. So what do you have to do to make sure you're not one of them?